There is a huge artist out there right now, a young man named Jivak, or Jake, as he prefers to be called. Jake blew up during the COVID lockdown, specifically on TikTok and on social media, media in general. He released a huge song called Golden Hour that hit number 10 on the Billboard charts. I think his album hit somewhere in the 50s. You can see a lot of his TikToks and YouTube shorts where he's performing Golden Hour all over social media. He's really, really big and getting much, much bigger. So all these things are really great for Jake, but an allegation which has recently been levied against him, is that Jake is faking his piano playing. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna hear just a little bit of Golden Hour. The fluttery little piano keys there. Okay, so we can hear all the sweeping different textures of melody folding over each other, an uncommon chord progression, really innovative kind of floody, fluttery arpeggiated uh, kind of staccato sounding delivery in his chords, really incredible vocal performance, really unique, really independent. Little odd, little interstitial notes here, really kind of a complex, interesting songwriter and somebody that people are really, really excited about, not just as somebody who writes great songs, but as like an innovative, unique talent. But accusations abound. So this is um, from a piano teacher. Piano teacher. I don't know why I said it like that. Uh, Clavier Lernen, which my guess means something like piano teacher in German. Um, but he, this is his video and this has gotten hundreds and hundreds of thousands of views here. And by the way, Jake responds to him here. I heard for Golden Hour the other day, and I checked out this TikTok here, this very popular TikTok you can see here, and I was wondering, wait, is he playing, he's playing different notes? And then I thought, wait, he's playing wrong notes. And then I did some research, and right now I am at a point that I'm thinking, <laughs> Can he even play the piano? I'm I'm really not sure. So let's have a look at his hands and let me let me know if he plays white or black keys or both. I'm nervous. <laughs> yes, he's nervous. So I think it's very obvious that in the right hand, at least, he only plays um, white, white notes. And I think he plays these notes. But we hear these notes. Yeah. And as you can see here, it's very obvious that my right hand plays here all these black notes. And in his right hand, there's not, there's not a single white note. There's not a single black note, sorry. Let's check out the other TikTok, also very famous. And the piano here already looks different, right? It's an electric piano now. Before it was an EP, um, acoustic piano. Now it's an electric piano. And let's listen to this. Teacher, until this happened. So I was very surprised because the sound now suddenly is exactly the same as with the acoustic piano. So the electric piano sounds exactly the same as the acoustic piano. So I put both audio tracks here into Studio One. One. Now we listen to the second one. It sounds exactly the same. They're identical. So let's listen to both at the same time. They're the same track. Right. So that's actually exactly the same recording. So, so what you see is definitely not what we hear and to me it sounds like a studio version that we are hearing but the piano is slightly out of tune because when i play now with my piano together oh yeah it's way out can you hear that it's out of tune yeah but it's a very easy fix i just change the tuning of my piano <laughs> just a little now it's all out of tune 
So they tuned the original recording a little further down so that it sounds like an old grand piano. Uh, <laughs> it's oh, very okay, funny. That's... So I was thinking, okay, let's find a live version. I mean, live, he really has to play live, right? So number one is The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. So it was beautiful. It was such a beautiful intro, I think. But again, no black keys on his fingers. Uh, well, I don't see any black keys. It was just two lovers. So the vocals now sound really live. So these are live vocals. Sitting in the car, listening to Blonde, falling for each other. So, but what we hear? It's a different key also now. I think he plays a little lower. Let's double check. So this time he starts from D sharp, not F sharp anymore, but D sharp. But again, we have a lot of black keys in the right hand and he only plays white keys. So <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, I don't want to be a hater. <laughs> so let me be clear. I really love the song and I think he has his heart on his right hand. And again, I think this has something to do with label and coast and TV show and so on, and they have their rules and, and so on. I love him, I love the song. The song is really, really good. So props to the songwriters. But it's so mind blowing what's going on in the music industry. Okay, so that is the accusation. It's been made a few other places on YouTube, but I think this uh, kind of sums it up best. Essentially the accusation is that Jake is not playing the song, especially when he's playing live. He's playing it in the wrong position. He's playing the wrong keys, and um, that this person thinks that he's kind of faking his ability to play the piano. Jake responded to this video in the comments, and we're gonna read that comment now. I use a transpose button, so I can always play it in the key of C major, all white notes. This makes it easier to play and sing such a complex piece. The pianos look acoustic, but they are in fact electric with the capability of transposing. Sometimes I also use the loop tracks or layer in the official audio to make it sound better. This is something all artists do to give the listener a better experience. At the end of the day, I'm just a songwriter without a label using video content Content to reach people with my music. I'll leave everyone with this question. Would you rather me take 100 plus hours to perfect one performance or use technology to speed up this process so I can spend more time writing new songs? That is Jake's comment to Clavier Lernin defending himself, saying essentially, I transpose, okay? Just a quick description of what transposing is. If I have an E chord, okay, I, ha I have written a song in E. It goes E, A, B, A, E, but I don't like to sing down there. Actually, I want to sing a lot higher up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my capo on the third fret, and now this becomes G. Now I can play the same chord shapes, but it's transposed up three steps. And I can sing up here if this is where I want to sing. So really a common thing for musicians to do, to transpose the song, especially singer-songwriters who are going to be performing live. Sometimes you want to sing it lower. Sometimes your voice feels more comfortable here. Sometimes your voice sounds more comfortable here. So transposing is, really, is totally fine. Guitar players do it all the time with a capo. And also there's little subtle differences between the keys and what maybe one performance might uh, illuminate about the song in one key might be different in a different key. Okay, so I actually don't see a huge problem with him transposing or using um, acoustic looking, I mean, I guess, they ha I guess they have to be giant, but acoustic looking pianos that are actually digital. I'm fine with that. I'm just a songwriter without a label. You also said before, because I don't have a label promoting me, it's just me and my brother. Because I want to prove that you don't need a label to make it in the music industry. But why are 79 people managing your Facebook page? Everyone can check that. I click about that page and click here, people who manage this page, 48 in Canada, 26 United States, 4 United Kingdom and 2 in Singapore. I don't, okay. Let's check Justin Bieber. What? <laughs> Justin Bieber's social media team is 89 people. Ariana Grande, 27 people. Beyonce, 84 people. Taylor Swift, 111 people. So Jake, 
but why do you have 79 people managing your Facebook page? Okay. I also visited the website aval.com. Aval belongs 100% to Sony Music, one of the biggest labels in the world. Okay. And first thing I see when I Are visit the website is you. Their distribution Then though? I scroll down and it says record label. They okay. provide money for marketing, production and whatever else it takes to push your project up to the charts. Playlisting, radio promotion, the record label. Apple ads. Label. I made a detailed video about that. The link is in the description below. Okay. It does not look to me that it's just you and your brother. All right, so that's another accusation, that Jake is actually not an independent artist, that he's secretly signed by Sony. Now, in Jake's defense, AWOL doesn't structure itself like other labels, uh, it appears. It seems like they don't force the artist to give up control, but they're still a label, and they still have the resources, I would imagine, of a label. But he's trying to appear to be like an independent artist, and he seems to have said before that, oh, he wants to prove that you can make it in the music industry as an independent artist. Um, people have made that, <laughs> people have done that before. It is much harder to do it, probably, uh, you know, but there are certainly marvelous independent artists out there that everyone can listen to. But it sounds like he wants that cred. He wants it to be just him and his bro, and they're making the music at home in kind of the do-it-yourself, bootstrappy way, and uh, blah, blah, blah. So I don't know that the number of people managing a Facebook page necess necessarily means that you're working with a label. But if you're working with AWOL and they're owned by Sony, then you're definitely working with a label. You're, uh, you're not 100% independent, which does not, is not, it's fine. I mean, tons of artists use record labels. I just probably want to be you to be more honest about that, but that's probably the first thing I've seen here that to me like really does kind of smell fishy. Like I do think he can play piano. I think he wrote Golden Hour. I think he can play Golden Hour live. I believe him about the transposing. But the thing about him wanting to pretend to be an independent artist, I don't totally buy that. Okay, you also said I use a transpose button so I can always play in the key of C major all white notes. This makes it easier to play and sing such a complex piece. The, the piano looks acoustic, but in fact they are electric with the capability of transposing. The capo makes it easier, right? So if you want to play the way John Frusciante plays under the bridge, you'd have to bar it yourself. Right, it's a little bit more complicated than just putting a capo here. Both are playable, it just takes a little bit longer to learn how to bar it yourself, right? It means I'm more able to focus on the vocal performance, on connecting with the crowd, than on hitting extraordinarily specific fingerings for these chords, which would sound just as good uh, with a capo. Okay, I think using a transpose button is okay. My subscriber Sylvie also said that guitarists do the same using this capo duster, but capo. it doesn't change the yes. fact that the videos I watched you playing I didn't hear what you were playing. It was a recording. And also the teacher's reactions were fake. Here, going one frame back and forth. And also here, oh, one okay. frame back and forth. I can see that these videos were definitely edited. The one, the TikTok ones that make it seem like he's in front of his piano teachers. I wonder if these are even his real piano teachers. I don't know. I mean, they could be actors. So there's some sketchiness around this, okay? But he's a young guy, and who knows who convinced him to do this? If like they said, "Oh, do this, and it'll make you popular," and and you know it's better to ask for forgiveness than for permission. Maybe that's the case. I don't know. But I do hope he addresses this, and I hope he comes out and plays an, an amazing acoustic version of this song in front of his real piano teacher. Would you rather me take 100 plus hours to perfect one performance? I'll use technology to speed this process so I can spend more time writing new songs. I would say from your current progress, if you can really play that, to practice this performance to perfection will take you four days. Every day for four hours. That's less than a week. Is it worth it to practice less than a week? A song, a super hit? that you will play again and again in your True. lifetime, you will perform True. this song probably hundreds, yeah. probably thousands of times. I'd rather you perfect the performance or just get it good. It doesn't have to be perfect, but 
if it's really to the place where you can sing it and play it at the same time, like you're saying on stage, I think you can get it there. I, I mean, people will spend a lot more than 100 hours to learn a, 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 a performance. I mean, it's, it's part of your craft. It's part of what you're doing. It's part of how you present yourself as a pianist, not as somebody who mimes piano. So I don't think it's to the point where he can't play. I actually am pretty sure he can play. I also am pretty sure he wrote the song and, and, and created that incredible melody and the developed the chord structure and everything. I think he wrote this song, but I also agree that it's probably not super kosher for him to only play or pretend like he's playing, if that's what he's doing. Okay, then you said, sometimes I also use loop tracks or layer in the official audio to make it sound better. This is something all artists do to give the listener a better experience. Mm, not really, but... I use loop tracks or layer in the official audio audio i use loop tracks or layer and the official right, so audio. this is not going to go kosher with what him what does that mean <laughs> yeah all artists do that i don't know a single one who does that yeah anyways the song is beautiful right so i actually don't agree with um clavier learner learning here because he yes sometimes pianists will do that my guess is that he is mostly familiar with classical Uh, uh, orchestra pianists, pl people who play in that uh, genre and that style, maybe jazz also, but um, certainly live chamber style music. My guess is his, the pianists he knows and the artists he knows would never, ever, ever layer in a loop or a stem from something they had already recorded in order to make it sound better. But when you're playing to huge audiences in a big pop venue, in a big stadium setting, or in a big, even like a club setting or an outdoor setting or something like that, yes, sometimes they will layer those in because it fills in the signal a lot bigger and makes the experience a lot better for people. Now, I don't know about just playing over the track. It, like if he's literally out there, if Jake is literally out there just faking it and moving his fingers on the keys where it's just being played from a, a, a pre-recorded track, to me, that's not super kosher. Like, just like play the song. Like, Jake's awesome. Like, he, this isn't going to stop him. Nothing's going to derail him on his progress. But I do think that this is a legitimate gripe to have. And I, and I don't think it's totally unreasonable for, for this guy to kind of take issue with it. This song is definitely something I would love to hear performed live without any sort of correction, without any sort of edits. I'd love to just hear an acoustic version of him playing it on the piano. I think he could prove a lot of people wrong just by doing that. Like get a big old acoustic piano, um, tune it to where you want it tuned or, or, or something like that, and just get, get, these, get the notes under your fingers and knock everybody the F out because this is an amazing song. It's an amazing first album for him to put out. Like He's only got positive things coming to him after this. But yes, I do think that he could spend some time to learn the song. Anyway, so let me know what you think. Do you like Jake? Do you think that this is, uh, do you think this is a legitimate, legitimate for him to perform this song in this way? Um, do you think he's playing? Do you think he can play piano? Do you think he wrote the song? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Please be relatively kind and courteous to each other. <laughs> and until next time, keep playing.